Hey guys, I'm here at the uh, the Allegheny Portage Railroad National Historical Site here in Crescent, known as the Lemon House. Um, and uh, this is actually where uh, me and my wife Sarah took our uh, engagement pictures uh, way back in the day when uh, we first got engaged. And uh, so I thought maybe this would be a fitting spot to give you guys uh, the latest update on what's going on with Sarah and her stay in the ICU and her journey uh, through all this that's going on. So with that, the Vocek experience starts right now. Welcome back to another video of the Vocek Experience, where idiots are still always us. Always me. You know that. I even got my Idiots Are Us shirt on. No, don't know how well you can see that there, but I'm wearing this shirt. And of course, I got this shirt available on the merch store, so if you, if you like it and you want one. Uh, but anyway, um, like I said, we're here to give you guys an update on what's going on with uh, with Sarah and her still being in the ICU, uh, going on almost three weeks now. Now, if you've watched uh, the other update videos, you know that uh, she has been in the hospital for the better part of the whole month of July and now part of uh, the beginning part here of August. Um, she went in, in around the beginning of uh, July, uh, for the fact that she was thrown up all the time, uh, she ended up getting a stomach bug. We both got the stomach bug. I recovered and she didn't, and she just kept, you know, thrown up and all this stuff. So we eventually, after about three, four weeks of her doing this, we took her to the emergency room and she ended up getting admitted. And, uh, they found out that, uh, she had walking pneumonia uh iron deficiency anemia and congestive heart failure and uh and of course her lactic acid levels kept fluctuating and all that stuff but after being in the hospital a week and a half they let her come home she was home for about four days and then uh something happened where she just started getting confused she didn't know where you know she was or anything so i called an ambulance and they came and they took her back to the emergency room. And of course I, you know, went down there as well to see what was going on. And uh, they ended up admitting her again to the hospital, but this time in the ICU. Uh, and uh, she was in the Altoona hospital uh, for about two weeks in the ICU. She wasn't waking up really. She wasn't all that responsive or anything like that. And, uh, and I think uh, where I left off in my previous update video was that they were going to be doing uh, several tests that they needed my consent for. They were going to do a spinal tap, uh, a biopsy of her bone marrow, and they're going to be doing a genetic uh, scan uh, to test her genetic code to see, you know, if whatever it is she's got, uh, you know, is part of her genetic makeup and all that stuff. Um, the spinal tap came back negative for anything and the bone marrow uh, biopsy came back negative as well uh, for anything but uh, but the genetic testing is going to still take 
a while. It's been almost two weeks since that test was done. We are still waiting results, but they had to send all that up to the Mayo Clinic because it takes quite a while to do uh, gene mapping and everything to determine if whatever is going on with her is genetic and they can see it in her genes. So with that, um, like I said, she's been at the Altoona Hospital in the ICU. Uh, and then uh, a few days ago, actually last week, um, I went down there to visit her and uh, the doctor came in and told me that uh, they had exhausted all their uh, options um with her and everything so they were going to be transferring her out to uh pittsburgh uh to the icu out in pittsburgh they said they'd have better luck uh treating her out there because they have better doctors better specialists better equipment and all around just a better icu unit and uh so they just had to wait a couple of days until they could get her a bed up there and everything. But uh, but in the meantime, uh, they were started to work on a couple of theories as to what was going on. One of them being lupus and another one being stiff person syndrome. Now, stiff person syndrome is a very, very rare autoimmune disease. Uh, and uh, most of the nurses and doctors really didn't know too much about it. But that was the two theories that they were leaning to as to what's causing uh, this whole thing with Sarah being in the ICU. So, uh, but anyway, a couple of days later, they called me. They told me that they got her a room out in Pittsburgh and everything. And so they life flighted her from Altoona to the Presbyterian, Presby, I can't even pronounce it. We'll just call it Presby. That's what we'll do. We'll just call it the Presby Hospital out in Pittsburgh because for some reason, I cannot pronounce that. Probably because my brain's all weird. But anyways, uh, so she went out there. She went out to Pittsburgh. Uh, her flight there, no issues, no nothing. Uh, they got her in. They got her settled in. Uh, they had a whole team of doctors come in and do a complete workup on her. And, uh, and of course, they looked at her chart from Altoona and everything so they could see what, was, what they thought and everything so they know where to pick up from. Now she's been in uh, Pittsburgh uh, quite a few days now. Uh, and um, yesterday, uh, myself, uh, my mother, and Sarah's dad, my father-in-law, uh, we went down to Pittsburgh uh, to go see her. Now for us, where we, we at, where, where we live at, I should say, geez, I just cannot talk today. Just bear with me. <laughs> Uh, cause I'm just getting my words all mixed up here. But anyhow, um, we went out there to go see her and everything. And, uh, to our shock and surprise, when we walked into her room, uh, she was actually awake. She was alert. Uh, the only thing is though, she st is still intubated. She still has, uh, the breathing tube, uh, down her throat and everything. So it's been, you know, it's been hard for her. She can't speak or anything right now. Uh, but they're saying that uh, she is pretty much breathing on her own, but they still have uh, the tube down there just to help her in case she needs it. They said that she's pretty good with breathing and all that stuff. And they told us that they were actually thinking about taking the tube out the next day, which would have been today. However, uh, earlier today, I was just about to go door dashing and, uh, and of course I was going to call the hospital to get an update because like I said, where we live in Crescent, Pennsylvania here, where she's at, uh, in Presby in Altoona is a two hour drive. So it's kind of hard for us to get up there, uh, as often as we'd like. Um, but, but anyway, uh, when we got there and everything, like I said, she was alert, she was awake. Uh, so that was a nice shock and surprise for us. And uh, and like I said, they're thinking about taking the tube out today, but the hospital called me uh, earlier today and told me that they were going to uh, hold off another day on them uh, taking the, the, the vent out today because they're going to be doing a, another procedure on her tomorrow 
that's going to require her to keep the vent in. They're going to be doing uh, some kind of ultrasound uh, on her heart because, of course, she still has congestive heart failure and, uh, and she's still, you know, like her legs are all swollen and her hands are swollen and her arms from the fluid buildup and everything because of the congestive heart failure. So they want to go in uh, with some kind of scope through the tube to take a look inside her heart better to try to see more what's going on and how they can go from here with that. So because of that, they require her to stay on the vent and to be intubated. And from what the nurse told me uh, when I talked to her today, uh, she said that Sarah was not uh, too thrilled about, you know, keeping the tube down her throat for another day. And I don't blame her. Um, when we saw her yesterday, even though she looked a whole lot better than what she did uh, in Altoona for those two weeks when she was pretty much out of it. Uh, but I could really tell it was very uncomfortable having uh, that tube down her throat and everything. And, you know, so I'm just hoping that they're able to take that out tomorrow after they're done with uh, all the tests that they need to do. And, uh, and another test that they're also going to do is they're going to take a biopsy of her muscle because they're working with another theory as to what's causing everything. Now, this current theory that they have, uh, has to do, uh, with her muscles, hence the reason why they need to do a biopsy. Um, right now, the, the exact name uh, this is escaping me because these medical terms, sometimes I don't get it. Uh, but they told me it was some kind of myopathy uh, with her muscles or something that they need to check to see if maybe what all this is going on is in her muscles. Um, mainly also because of all her symptoms and everything. And everything is kind of pointing in that direction that if... They find what they're looking for. They said everything will come together like pieces of a puzzle and would have a complete picture of what's going on. So I know they're going to be doing this biopsy tomorrow, but I'm really not sure when the test results are going to be back from the biopsy. I don't know how long this takes. So it still could be a couple of days before we know. Uh, but that's currently what's going on with her. And, uh, and I'll also tell you that... Uh, because I was not prepared, none of us were prepared for her to be awake and alert yesterday. Um, when we were in there visiting her, uh, she was looking for her glasses. Now she can't talk or anything because of the tube, but from her hand gestures and, and the way she was moving her eyes around, she wanted her glasses. But unfortunately, uh, I did not bring them with me yesterday. Uh, mainly because the fact that I did not know she was actually going to be awake and alert. I thought she was still going to be like she was in Altoona, you know, lying there partially sedated and, you know, not really doing much of anything. So, uh, so that means, um, I'm going to have to make sure I have her glasses because, uh, in a couple of days, I'm going to be going back out to Pittsburgh in a couple of days, uh, I'm going to be with, uh, with my sister-in-law, which would be, you know, Sarah's sister, uh, and my brother-in-law. They're going to be picking me up and we're going to go out there on Wednesday. So I'll probably have another update, you know, here in a couple of days, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to meet with her, uh, health team, uh, the team that's taking care of her while she's in Presby, just so we can get a better, you know, perspective on what's going on and what they think. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to going out and seeing her again. It kills me the fact that I can't go, you know, like at any point on any day to go and see her. That is killing me. You have no idea being two hours away you know, while she's in the hospital, you know, but yeah, that, that just kills me, but, but, uh, you know, what can you do? I mean, you know, gas prices keep going up and, you know, different things. So, but, uh, 
But anyway, whenever, whenever I go back on, on Wednesday, I'm going to take her glasses and I'm also going to take her cell phone out there with her. So I got to make sure I get that charged up because it's been dead for about three weeks now, ever since I took her in uh, about almost three weeks ago. Um, so I'm going to have to get that charged for her and everything so that um, once we leave again and, and stuff, she's able to uh, talk to us more, text us, you know, all that stuff while we're away. And this dang bug, get away from me. Anyway, <laughs> this bug's trying to eat me or something. Anyway, uh, so that, yeah, that's pretty much the update. Um, but she's finally coming around and finally able to, you know, be alert, communicate. I'm finally able to talk to her and everything. Um, I just wish that uh, when I saw her yesterday, I just wish that she could talk back. But but unfortunately, she is still intubated. So uh, so unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait until they take that tube out. And hopefully that's tomorrow. I'm really hoping that's tomorrow after they're done with all these tests. Um, but yeah, I will keep you guys updated on what's going on with her currently. So, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed getting this update. I hope you enjoyed hearing the good news that she's awake and alert. And with that, uh, if don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel uh, and uh, give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you get notified of future updates and videos like this one so you can keep up to date on what's going on with Sarah. And of course, um, if you want to support this dumb little channel of mine, hit that, uh, that join button. Come member of the Idiot Squad because we'd love to have you. And of course, you can follow me on all the major social medias. All those links are all down below. Check out the merch store. That link is also down below. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, and uh, also check out my audio podcast, Idiots Are Us, The Story of Me. Uh, it's available on all the, you know, your usual podcasting platforms. All that good stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I'm excited that uh, she's finally coming around, that she's alert, awake, and you can actually talk to her. I can't wait until she gets off that vent so that she can actually talk to us, so that she's not trying to communicate with her hands and her eyes, and us trying to guess what she wants. Because I know yesterday she was getting frustrated because she wanted a few things, but we just weren't getting what the gestures mean and we kept guessing and of course it wasn't right and she was getting agitated and everything so I will be so glad once that tube's out and we're able to communicate a lot better and uh and I'm thinking and I know that this move to Pittsburgh was the right decision um I just wish that it could have happened a lot sooner than it did you know um but it is what it is, uh, but at least she's getting better, and it looks like uh, the hospital out in Pittsburgh has got some good theories on what's going on, and, um, and hopefully they can just pinpoint it once they get that biopsy done and that genetic testing comes back so that we know exactly what it is, how to treat it, and maybe try to prevent it from coming back again. Because her being in the hospital like this is just... It's killing me. Um, and, and of course, you know, the whole family's concerned and everything. Uh, our animals are keep wondering where she is. Um, our dog, Esri, you know, every time I come home from doing something like work or DoorDash or something, when I walk in that house, she's like still waiting at the door a little bit, seeing if she's behind me. Uh, she's always looking out the window, looking for her. So... I'll be so glad once this is behind us and she's able to come home. Uh, but anyways, um, that's the video. So um, I hope you're all out there are having a good day, good night, good week, good weekend. Whatever the case is when you're watching, you know, I hope you're not melting with this massive heat wave that parts of the country are having and everything. And I just hope that all in all, everybody's okay. Uh, so, uh, but with that, uh, I will see you all in the next video. So, bye for now.